Talos Magic Talk Show brought to you by Talos Master G C Food and Team Yet Dragon Talosum. Puriang Tenjon. Hi everyone. Welcome back to the show. This is your G C Food right here. So today we're gonna have another interesting topic. Uh, based on our previous one, okay, uh, this is a Talism and Talus Magic talk show. So the topic today is: Should you uh, put an altar in a house when you moved into the house? Uh, altar, you know, like the altar, put a table there, worship from God, that kind of thing, right? Okay, uh, first of all, not all altars are equal, okay. <laughs> Um, if you're my disciple, then of course you need your altar, right? Uh, but if you're not, should you do it? Um, well, first of all, do you have a master? Are you learning stuff? Are you are you like a disciple of someone? Uh, if you are, go back to your master and ask that person for help. Right? If that person don't know that he is not qualified to be a master, so anyway. You want to ask your master for help, okay? If you don't have a master, if you're not a disciple of someone, you're not a practitioner of like magic of any kind, following a professional. If you're not okay, you should not do any worshiping in the new house. Oh, why? Because you're not connected to any gods. Simple as that. You're not connected to any gods. Putting up a statue of something doesn't mean you are actually worshiping any god. Okay, a lot of Chinese have this problem. They just like, oh, we got a business. We gotta like put up a general Quan or something, and then they just buy a statue, put it there, and then like pretend they know, and then burn some incense, say a prayer, and they believe that will work. Okay, to be honest. This is dangerous. Don't do that, right? Does it work? Yes, it works because you are creating your own god. That is no different from a little girl uh, calling that teddy bear that she is hugging her friend, right? So she believe this teddy bear is a real being, uh, and she called that her friend, and she pray with it, and so on, right? So. Yeah, you're just like that. You buy a statue, you call that your god, and you believe in it, right? Same thing. What you're doing is no different from people thousands of years ago creating their own gods, which is the sun today too. Hey, what you're doing is you are just putting your faith, or I can say your heart energy, right? The heart energy comes from your energy's body core, which is the heart. This heart energy is the energy of creation, energy of life. Everyone has it. Once you believe something blindly without proof, you are putting your heart energy into that stuff. So yes, any kids doing the same thing with their toy figure. I believe this Batman will protect me. Right? Same thing with you holding that General Kwan statue. No different. Oh, but I burn incense. Doesn't matter. Okay, whatever ritual you do is the same deal. You're creating your own god. Now, there's nothing wrong about creating your own god at first. What's wrong is if that new house have spirits or ghosts. Or whatever evil things, unseen things, right? Those invisible beings, to invisible to you, okay? Those beings, they can hijack your statue and become your god. You see how scary that is? It's like a hacker. You open your computer, expose your computer to the public Wi-Fi network. Without any password, what can happen? Hackers can get you. 
right? Very simple. You open your own computer as a hotspot, and with no like password or protection, people can get in easily and steal your information. Same thing with the altar. You open a statue. You don't know how to protect it. You're just doing it yourself. If there are stuff inside the house haunting the house, they would just go inside and say, "Okay, now I'm your god. You can invest into me," and then they will use you. Okay, I've seen real story like that. Don't become another victim. What happened is, the scary thing comes later. It's not like, oh, I invited the evil spirit into my statue, and then that night, you know, I started seeing things, and then people go crazy and and they die. You know, it's not like that. Evil things are like con artists. They con you. It's like they put a setup on you to aim for the long term benefit. They will help you. Yeah. They won't hurt you. Why? Why do you think the evil stuff want to hurt you? Right? They don't. They don't want to hurt you. They want to use you as a money tree. And to them, what is the money? What is the the benefit? What is the money that these evil spirits want? To the evil spirit, okay? You don't understand because you're not in that world. To those evil spirits, they want. Your soul energy. Why? Because soul energy is precious in their world, in the evil spirits or ghosts or whatever, right? In their world, they are not like us with a physical body. The difference between the two worlds, one thing that is very, 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 very different, is that right here. If we want anything, we can go outside and buy it. We can find it. We can make it out of elements outside. But in the spirit world, it's not like that. Everyone is like they only have a soul body, and they are not like us with a physical body. If they want anything in that world, it's like a fantasy. You can make it like, like, ding, and then it just appear out of the blue. You can make things out of thin air. It's so scary. But what it costs is the soul energy. If you make something, you will feel weaker because it uses your soul energy to create that stuff. It transform into that stuff. If you make too much. You cannot afford it because it will kill your health. And what happens is your ability to exist in that world will reduce. So imagine like you're like one、uh, picture on the monitor, and then your opacity just like got low down, so you start to fade out, right? And then you become weaker. You become weak and sick in that world. So, in order for people to keep on building and creating and have things that they want, they have to accumulate more soul energy. They can do that by eating each other, like here, right? In this world, we also consume each others by maybe like. Consuming each other's time, right? You talk to people, you consume their time. We consume animals too. We eat them. It sounds scary, right? But yeah, those spirits they eat each other's for the soul energy. But then it's like so little compared to us human being. We have like a lot of soul energy. Our soul energy replenish every day. When we sleep, when we eat, there's like endless amount of soul energy being generated every day. They're like, wow, human being are so nice. So if we can like get into their body, 
juice up all the or maybe like half of their soul energy and then we can get out and let them replenish and go back in <laughs> right so eventually it's like you got a free generator wow that's the value of human being in the evil spirit's eyes that's why they love possessing whenever the spirit possess a human being they loot your soul energy away and then they come back and then they go away they come back they go away right sometimes they just come in for a split second you know it's like you just want a quick tap and then that's it okay and then you don't even feel a thing but maybe just a little bit tired so yeah and eventually you know what you feed that thing so much so so long so many times and that thing just got addicted it's like drug they got addicted and they want more so maybe you got a statue today and the statue got hacked that thing just you know tap onto your energy when you're like burning incense praying and such like that because while you're doing those rituals you are outputting your soul energy too and that thing just like loot a little bit right it's fine i mean you don't feel a thing because you're doing what you're supposed to do and you do your praying talking worshiping and then okay you go eat your breakfast and whatever right it feels natural to just feel a little bit tired in the morning right yeah so that thing just absorbed that little bit of energy after a few months you feed that thing every day right so its stomach get bigger it needs more it wants more and then it will come back for more and eventually you feel like oh how come like every day i'm so tired even i sleep a lot i'm still so tired what's going on well you don't realize that thing is like i i need more <laughs> so not just the time when you are doing your worship but maybe when you're working that thing already try to suck you up, suck up your energy right and eventually they're like i need more so yeah and then they will suck up your wife's energy and then sooner or later you see people starting to get sick all the time or energy is like always low and down and eventually the whole family get affected and then you know what up to a point when the family is like so contaminated with that stuff and that evil thing is so strong then it will it will influence the energy of the house and make people not happy it makes everyone always like angry uh not harmonized and then eventually it will stir up a lot of other problems and then you'll be like one day okay you feel that ah oh, this thing is not blessing our family we have been praying to this for so long it's not blessing us it we're having so much problem oh you you just realize okay you just realized that right and you decided to like let go of it or maybe change another one right maybe like you want to change your religion or change the the statue to another god or something like that okay uh oh now that evil thing is like ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, uh. you're trying to get out of okay you're trying to like get rid of me no it's not going to happen then they will flip the table they will make you realize that doing that is a bad move right like a con artist they will give you troubles when you have the thoughts of removing things then you crash your car then a flood happened then a fire happened then someone get hurt then someone broke their leg wow so many things happen we must pray harder now <laughs> you see how this thing is like a big problem right if you have a statue an altar and you don't have the power to protect it that's what's going to happen eventually if there are like evil things that decided to hack you so for altars um that are hosted by like real practitioners like my disciples right your altar when you built it they're all connected to the lineage to the lineage power right if the evil spirits want to go inside the lineage power is going to kick them out you're being protected 
once I know that there is this altar under our lineage, that lineage power will be like connected to the altar. So it protects the altar from being hacked. And if that thing like try to like brutally just like get in, right, they will be killed. Because we have what we call the troops. Like we have our people, right? Our troops, the celestial army, uh, to kick their butt. So you see, there's like this protection at the back. If you don't belong to any sect or lineage, you're on your own. If that thing try to hack in, and maybe the first time, your own energy is like, let's say you're like strong-minded. So the first time, oh, it bounced that thing away. What if the thing just keep coming back? You will be exhausted, and you will eventually lose the battle because there's no backup. You have no backup, and an ordinary human being, your power is super weak. Compared to these like spiritual tyrants, okay, it's like you're like using nerf guns, and they are like using real bullets. How can you fight these things? You cannot, and that is why we cultivate so hard to be able to deal with spiritual problems. You are not trained, right? Don't pretend to be a fighter. You're not a trained. Uh, spiritual fighter you need to have us here to help you deal with things so back to the main topic the question is should you have an altar uh, or put an altar up when you first enter the house if you're a normal person you don't have any master lineage at your back don't mess with altar okay but if you really want to worship something, you should find, like, if you can find us. We can help you to build an altar for an outsider. Like, you are, like, let's say you don't want to be a disciple. You don't want to learn things. Okay, fine. But we can also build an altar for you just for, you know, keeping your house safe and things like that. And that altar that we built is still connected and protected by the lineage right so you're still safe because we are the one that opens it if you do it yourself i guarantee you that it will not be safe because you don't have the power right so you can find us for help if you really want one uh, but what's better than like being able to open the altar yourself right so that's why i say if you really like these things you feel like i really want to worship this and that Learn the real thing, right? Just get real. Learn. Maybe in the past, you don't know where to learn. Right? It's like, oh, I want to learn, but it's like there's no one around my place. And Okay? Now, you don't need to fear that. We teach online. Go to our website, tinyadragon.com, get ordained, and you will be able to learn from home. You don't need to travel. We teach online. We use that line app to talk so as long as like you have internet right and you know english or chinese we can teach you and you can learn online but what about the supplies and all that stuff well everyone order from online these days right so if you need anything we can point you to links and you can buy them online it's so easy i have been teaching for quite a while okay? and there's a lot of people learning online there's no problem you can learn online for those who say, oh, you cannot learn magic online. Well, it's like back in the old days, people say you cannot fly in the air too, right? Now we have airplane. So I can only say those who say you cannot learn magic online, they are just frog under the well, you know, frog in the well. You just don't see the world. <laughs> okay, you, don't, you cannot. Does that mean that there's no way to do it? So anyway, if you are moving into a new house, and you want to have an altar, you can find us, okay? And if you have already built your own altar and now you know you're in trouble, you can also find us and we can help you to handle the situation. Okay, so see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.